This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. I'm your host Duncan McLeish, welcome to the show. Up on this episode, we are giving you a review of the brand new horror title Immaculate. It has been out for about a week and a half in the UK and on this particular video or podcast, wherever you're checking us out, you will be getting a non-spoiler and spoiler review of the movie. So if you've got not a slight passing interest in knowing anything about the movie, just hit stop right now and you have saved yourself any potential uh, tidbit of spoiler that may be in there. If you are gearing up to go and see it and you maybe want some musings, some thoughts to kind of kind of get you excited for it then check out the non-spoiler version of this review like I say check the time codes and if you've already checked out the movie or for you spoilers mean absolutely diddly squat then power right through the entire video don't say that you haven't been warned so yeah I checked out the movie yesterday a bit a week late to, to be fair but I had uh, already reviewed Late Night with the Devil so it kind of evened itself out so to speak. So yeah, we're going to be doing a review of that movie and find out, do I think it lives up to the quote-unquote hype? Do I think the end of the movie is as crazy as the critics are saying? You'll find out when we get to it. Um, yeah, before we get to that, there will be one more review video dropping before the end of this week. It will be my in-depth coverage of Glasgow Fright Fest, which uh, concluded just a little over two weeks ago, 11 mini movie reviews for you of movies that hopefully you will be able to check out within the next year when they get release dates up and down the country on whatever streaming services are going to play them. So I know that some of the movies from last year have made their way out, but there's still a ton of them that are not available. So, you know, you can never tell when you do these things, but I'll be giving you my thoughts and my musings on them anyway. So, without any further ado, we're going to take our first break. I'm going to take a slight short break. You are going to get the trailer for the movie Immaculate, directed by Michael Monin, and when I return, I'll be reviewing that movie in non-spoiler and spoiler. This is the third time I'm saying it. Check the time codes, and uh, we're going to get that discussion right after this. Welcome back. So you've just seen the trailer for Immaculate. We are going to give you some details on the movie. It's listed from the IMDb. So I do that, of course, screen stills from the movie will play over words and that way you don't see me frantically reading from my computer. So here we go. Immaculate is directed by Michael Monin. It is based on the story by Andrew Lobel. The movie itself stars Sidney Sweeney, Alvaro Morti, Simona Tobasco, Bernadette Provacoli, uh, Giorgiano Colonagli, Dora Romano and a myriad of other names. 
The synopsis for this movie is Cecilia, a woman of devout faith, is warmly welcomed to the picturesque, perfect Italian countryside where she is offered a new role at an illustrious convent. But becomes clear to Cecilia that her new home harbours dark and horrifying secrets. So yeah, this is the non-spoiler part of the review. I'm basically going to give you a kind of overview of what I think worked, what I think didn't work, and give you a little score on the movie. We'll then jump into spoiler territory. There will be a warning before we do that, and you can jump ahead if you're using chapters in the video version of the podcast, or follow the time code in the actual podcast audio version on any of the podcatchers you're checking out. So, Immaculate getting a bit of a buzz. Um, to be honest, 2024 thus far has not been a stellar year for horror cinema. I'll, there's been quite a few titles released actually theatrically, a couple of Blumhouse ones that have been kind of duff, like haven't really kind of captured the interest in any great way, shape or form. It kind of feels like we're treading water a little bit for what will be coming out in the next couple of months and beyond and there are some fun and heavy hitting titles sure to come out and this was kind of this month particularly it would have been march end of march it was the kind of first big here we go horrors about to kick off late night with the devil which the is a review of that movie out there now on my channel so go and check it out uh but cecilia was the other one um kind of dubbed a kind of non-sploitation although I will stress this is not a non-sploitation movie under the general terms of what traditional non-sploitation movies are uh, but that's how it's been heralded um, and it was being kind of pivoted towards a uh, wait till you see how the movie ends and you know it's going to end in shocking fashion audiences will be stunned what works for the movie there's actually quite a lot that I thought worked really really well i think the cinematography and the, the actual set design is handsome in this movie it does evoke a kind of euro 70s kind of style particularly italian um sort of cinematography is very grand uh, very ornate i think they put a great emphasis on making sure that all that stuff feels authentic and feels real, the convent feels lived in, there's tons of atmosphere, there's a lot of stuff that's set up that pays off, the, the, even the imagery in the movie itself is very striking of that time and it kind of plays with the idea of kind of religious horror in a less American fashion and a more a European fashion. So if you've seen um, a, a lot of the kind of non-sploitation movies or particularly some of the 70s Italian horror movies that deal almost ornately with religion it kind of follows in that way it doesn't hold um the church uh, the catholic church in particular to any high regard or esteem out with that you know secrets are prevalent everywhere and some of them are more weighty than others um, I think the casting is good. I enjoyed it. Some of the roles, a bit over the top and a bit campy in my opinion, but they actually worked overall for the, the tone and vibe. And those roles which felt a bit kind of campier certainly had a lot more menace as more plot devices were revealed throughout the story. So I thought that was handled very well. I think uh, the main role played by Sydney, uh, who plays sister Cecilia, um, is excellent. I think she really put... She's apparently behind the production of this one. She's kind of been spearheading uh, a lot of the movement to get it made. And as a result, having a name like hers attached to it has given it a bit of clout and a bit of prominence, certainly from a studio want to make it, but also in the, in the way it's been released. And I think she does really, really well in this. I... I, I gets kind of gonzo towards the end in a way where she fully embraces that performance. I think had she approached it maybe a bit more serious, it would have probably fallen apart pretty quick, like a poorly constructed paper mache fan. Um, but I think, I think her understanding of what sort of movie she's in actually, if anything, aids it. I think the score is phenomenal in this one. Um, there is, in particular, 
a giallo nod, which as you'll know out there just does my heart and um, so very good. Um, they actually use over a montage sequence in the movie the main theme from the Red Queen Kill Seven Times, um, which is a very fun, quirky, very 70s sounding Italian kind of chic score. Uh, it's kind of playful and whimsical. It's very different than every other part of the score throughout this entire movie, which has a great deal of kind of opulence and grandeur with with uh, choir singing and uh, and religious overtones. So I I found that was kind of playful. Also, to me, shows that and there is a link. We'll talk about more in the spoilers, but there is an understanding from the director of the setting the the kind of time period he's trying to evoke and the use of that score is, in my eyes, no accident. It's someone that's clearly got a fondness for that particular era of movies as well and it's kind of bore its way through. Uh, what I didn't necessarily think worked very well is I think the first 40 minutes of this movie feel particularly paint-by-numbers-esque. Um... In fact, there's a huge swath of this movie that I kind of felt like I was ahead of the storytelling. Now, I'm not your general horror movie cinema goer, so as a kind of hardcore horror obsessed fanatic, I've seen a lot of variations of the movie they're trying to put on here. And as a result of that, it didn't feel fresh or new to me. I will say it wasn't a huge issue, but I did have this detraction in my head where I kind of felt like I was slightly ahead of the movie for, for, for large sections. I will say that the ending maybe didn't shock me as much as the advertising has claimed it will shock others. And I'm sure it probably does. I was in a, a not full cinema. I was in a cinema with about about 10 people in the, the screening that I saw and most of everyone there kind of gasped and made noises when they were supposed to at those moments to me it kind of felt felt like as soon as I knew a couple of minutes out from where the ending was going I kind of knew how the ending was going to go and as a result of that maybe it didn't have the same impact I will say I did like the fact it went where it went and we'll cover it more in the spoiler territory in the review so I think that was kind of cool um, and that's maybe the most remarkable thing about this. I think this is a movie that really gets a slightly better grade because of the ending, but everything else in the movie is relatively run-of-the-mill for a horror movie. If you've seen enough of them, you kind of know what you're getting, and it doesn't really go remarkable out with that. So yeah, loved the, the score, thought the cinematography was good, thought the casting was good. This movie is mercifully short. I mean, it's under an hour and a half, which is, you know, as a call that I will always take. Um, I enjoyed, like, being able to get through the movie really fast without too much weighty exposition. Um, of course, that means that when certain things are revealed in the movie, it does feel a bit clumsy, but you can't have a short movie and you know, shitloads of detail. It doesn't work that way. You kind of have to sacrifice one for the other and this movie holds together in spite of the fact that it doesn't have those elements. And yeah, I, I, I felt it a relatively unremarkable movie until the ending, which even then didn't do something I haven't seen other movies do before. So yeah, overall, I, I mean, I would say it's worth checking out. I don't know if it's a, you need to see this movie in the cinema. I think this is probably one that you could pick off on a Netflix, an Amazon, or an iTunes, or whatever, when, when they're shown, or when it makes its way out. I don't know if I would be recommending you rush out to check it, but I would say definitely check it before the end of the year when you're formulating the list. It's one of the better horror movies I've seen this year up until the point of recording, which is today is what the third of April. Um, but I haven't really seen that much that's kind of landed with me. There's been, you know, no home run horror movie for me thus far, so it's worth taking that into account as well. Uh, my score for the movie is a three point five out of five, so somewhere between I liked it and I really liked it. On a rewatch, it might go up. It might go up as high as a four, but that's where I'm sticking with at the moment. So yeah, immaculate non-spoiler review. 
and uh, I'm giving it a 3.5. So, this is your final warning. We are about to head into spoiler territory, so if you don't want to know anything, absolutely anything about the movie, this is the point that you want to skip to the next chapter, which will be like closing of show or ending of show, however I word it. But you just want to skip the bit that says spoilers, which is coming in 3, 2, 1. So, uh, yeah, so the premise of the movie is a nun comes to a convent, which is set up to look after ageing uh, nuns who have committed their life to service and are, you know, infirm, uh, suffering kind of uh, mental deterioration and, and heading towards death. Um, she's American. Most of the people there aren't American. It's set in Italy. Uh, she very quickly realises that it's a very strict place with a lot of weird characters. And she is told right at the start that, you know, this is built on catacombs. Which, if you're me, you put that one, file it as important information, probably for the end of this movie. Um, we kind of follow our life in the convent up to to being uh, essentially sworn in as a nun and we find that that actually in this convent they have what is purportedly one of the nails from the crucifixion of Jesus Christ um, and once again you find out that the the, the kind of head priest uh, used to work in uh, he used to be a scientist in biology, and once again, such a weird thing to mention, so you, if you're like me, you take that detail and you put that in the back as a, this is a plot device that will come back later on most likely. Um, Cecilia touches the cross at one, uh, well, the nail from the cross at one bit, kind of passes out, uh, and then we get like a montage where I mentioned earlier on, the Red Queen kills seven times. And the reason I said in the non-spoiler, was that that was kind of interesting choice. The, there is a sect of nuns in here that wear like the habit, etc., but wear a red mask over their face. And I think that idea of, you know, the Red Queen, the nuns with the red face, I think it all ties in, which once again to me means director probably knows his shit. Um, so yeah, uh, Cecilia finds that she's pregnant. Uh, but she is a virgin, so she is, she has immaculate conception, hence the title of the movie. And the church believe this is a miracle, and she's going to give birth to uh, the second coming of Christ. Of course, they lock and restrict almost all of her uh, interactions with the outside world. Uh, and anyone that speaks out or behaves in a kind of weird way disappear mysteriously, as you will see throughout the movie. Uh, certain characters die in pretty gruesome fashion. She gets more paranoid as she enters her second and third trimester that they won't let her see the ultrasound of her baby. They are talking like over the top of her and not paying attention and she gets this into her head that there's actually something wrong with her baby maybe she has the devil inside her and maybe this isn't a miracle um, and she tries to set up various schemes to escape long story short um, the big reveal in this movie which leads towards the end is that the father who was a biology scientist um, had found that there was trace DNA on the nail from the crucifix which they believed to be the blood of Jesus Christ what they've done is they have found a way to clone that DNA and artificially inseminate Cecilia um, they have apparently tried this many times before but it's failed uh, many times before and as a result they now have you know impregnated her she is obviously fucking shocked, she wants the baby out of her, she doesn't think this is right, it's an affront to God, etc, etc, and the end of this movie really is kind of her trying to escape the convent whilst taking out those that are holding her captive, she um, she kills the, the kind of, I don't know, head nun, I don't know what they're called, um, with a, a cross repeatedly bashing her in the face with it, um, the biology priest dude is first burned before he is stabbed in the neck with said 
nailed from the crucifixion. The kind of cardinal guy is strangled garrot style with his own rosary beads. Uh, and ultimately she ends up bloodied, bruised, stumbling and confused through the catacombs because we brought that back um, and exits of the, the kind of the catacomb gives birth to this baby which we never see we see it kind of off to the side blurred as this kind of black and red blob um, which and the huge spoiler alert right now um, she kills with a stone uh, while screaming maniacally um, which like I say if you've never seen anything like that before I imagine that is probably pretty fucking shocking I've seen a lot of shit that's not too dissimilar to that so maybe less shocking for me uh, there is a movie that played at Fright Fest in Glasgow which you'll be able to hear me talk about in the next episode um, on this feed uh, where a scene happens with an infant that is a hundred times more horrific than this you can hear a fucking rat pissing cotton the cinema went as quiet as it did. In the case of this one, I think people were just like, ooh. Um, I think it sticks to the landing, I think is very goofy. Interestingly enough, when I mentioned about that kind of 70s element of it, the movie really reminds me of Suspiria. The idea of an uh, American foreign student coming to a place which has mis mystique and, and mystery about it, and then almost being indoctrinated into like some scenario where the power is taken away from her and she's used as part of some sort of plot uh, or some description to resurrect some sort of evil. Ticked a lot of boxes that are, I think also predominantly female cast as well um, or aging female cast. Was that in the back of my head? It reminded me a lot of, it followed a lot of the beats of Suspiria. So... From that thing, I kind of I kind of dug it. It's also not too far off the runtime of Suspiria, so a lot of that kind of it evoked that memory for me while watching the movie. Like I say, I think it's very well put together. Uh, I think it's very well acted. I don't think it's the most remarkable movie I've seen. I think it does drag its feet a little bit at the start. I don't think it's as clever as it maybe thinks it is for those that are maybe a little bit more educated and I would say the big thing is if you've heard people talk about this as being a non-sploitation movie I would just do your research on what non-sploitation actually is and I think once you get a handle on a good five or six of the top tier non-sploitation titles you'll see why this one isn't actually within that genre. Great non-horror nonetheless uh, but not a non-sploitation movie by any stretch of the imagination so 3.5 is what I'm giving the movie. So there you go, ladies and gents. Spoilers are over. Hopefully you skipped over it if you have not or you very quickly worked out how to move ahead in the video to the time code listed below if you're checking us out in the audio form or whatnot. And that was my review of Immaculate. It gets a 3.5. I'm kind of hoping we're on the upswing now. There's a lot of horror movies being announced. Um, there's... Is it Abigail? Which is that kind of vampire action horror movie which is due out in April... Civil War, which is not a horror movie by any stretch of the imagination, but is being kind of set out as a, a horror movie. Saw the trailer for Taro, so that can't be that far away. So we are, we're getting a, a few being pushed away, so we'll see how we get on with those. And those are the ones that we know about at this level, and not the ones that'll be coming later on, the indie titles that'll be released, uh, and the stuff that your screen boxes, etc. will be putting out. Also, if you didn't get a chance to see Late Night with the Devil, on uh, its cinema run it will be making its way to Shudder I think it's the 22nd of April so keep your eyes peeled for that as well and check that one out, that one was a ton of fun I really enjoyed that movie uh, my slight gripes aside I think it is a good time for sure so yeah that's your episode of the podcast Under the Stairs looking at the movie Immaculate if you're checking us out on YouTube please like and subscribe to this channel like in the video obviously and leave some comments, did you check it Immaculate? What did you think about it? Uh, do you think it's an unsploitation movie? Do you enjoy unsploitation movies? Uh, did you pick out the Jallo uh, soundtrack reference that I did? Did you link it the way I linked it? Let's start a dialogue. It's always fun to chat back to you guys. But liking and subscribing, huge way to help 
this channel. If you're checking us out on the Spotify uh, podcast app or via Anchor, then you get the video audio versions of these. Um, there's always a question that pops up. Please answer the question at the end of the episode. And if you're checking out the audio version on the, of this on any of the podcatchers that are available, then please subscribe to those feeds. Um, that way you get access to over 1300 episodes of Podcasts Under the Stairs and all future content as well well podcast under the stairs will return at the end of this week when i'll be bringing you my rundown of glasgow fright fest 11 mini horror re- reviews coming your way so until then wherever you are what the time zone is and what you're up to in this big bad world of ours please take care of yourselves out there this is duncan mcleish broadcasting live from under the stairs and i am signing off